What is up guys? Today we're going to talk about HMP Doncaster, aka Doncatraz. Now if you don't know my story, back in the 90s I was a heroin addict. So all through the 90s, early 2000s, um, along with addiction comes crime, prison, you know, it's inevitable. It's an occupational hazard when you're an addict. And I used to be shoplifter, commercial burglaries, so I've spent years in prison. I'm not proud of it, but it happened, so I make videos and I talk about it. Um, I like to give both sides, though. You know, I like to show people that what prison's really like. It's crap, it's boring, it's depressing, it's violent. But you can also have a laugh in there, you know, while you're there. Um, and Doncatraz was my local prison. So I've spent years in Doncatraz. So anyway, let's get into it. Now, when I first got locked up, it was a triple cat a tough hard prison and back then there was a heroin epidemic so everyone well pretty much 90 percent of the wing was detoxing from heroin and there was no tvs there was no medication they just throw you in a cell and say get on with it and um i, I could still remember it like it was yesterday you know sat, on, sat in the cell rattling all night you can hear the birds tweeting and and then uh, you can hear the dinner car, uh, breakfast trolley come in, you can hear that. And then you can smell the toast uh, cooking. And and I used to put my face to the window and just breathe the air in. And I could still smell that fresh, clean smell now. And uh, you'd be up all night and then the doors would open like 6am. And there was this one kid, big, big stocky bloke he was, he was detoxing. He had a ponytail. And... 6 a.m. he'd come to the door, they'd let him out and he'd shout, All aboard the night train! Because <laughs> he knew everyone had been up all night rattling. Um, I remember when he once shouted over to me, he says, Buddy, you still rattling? I says, You fucking know I am, you dick. And he says, Oh, have a wank, it takes it, off your, it, takes it away for 30 seconds. <laughs> and um, when you're detoxing like that, Going in the shower, it relieves it a little bit, it makes you feel a little bit better. But it's a big job going in the shower when you haven't ate, when you haven't slept. It's like, ugh, you can't be bothered to do out. But, um, yeah, back then it was a triple cat a prison. I remember when I was on the YOs, um, they put me in with this kid. And I didn't know who he was. It was one of my first times in prison. I thought he was all right. I didn't know the ropes. And I got in the cell, he says, oh, you'll, you'll be all right with me. Come and sit with us at dinner and all this. And I thought, oh, nice one. And then next morning, he's moved cells and he's took my backy with him. And he only got like half ounce of gold of Virginia back then. But, you know, I just, because I, I was ill and rattling, and he took advantage and I just couldn't be arsed with it. I just thought, fuck it, I'll let him have it. But then when I got f through the detox, I put weight on, I started getting strong, I started mingling. I realised he was just a little mup here. So... I went straight to him, put it on him, and got me backy back. And that, that's happened a few times, you know. When I first land in prison, I'm ravished from drugs. I'm skinny. I'm I'm uh, vulnerable because I'm detoxing. And people like try to take the piss. And then, and I remember once one tall kid came to me cell. He was running his mouth, and I just said to myself, "Mate, I said, no, just get a couple more, get a couple months. Let me get strong, and I will be knocking on his door." And <laughs> exactly that. And. Um, you know, I put it on him and he crumbled. But I get that all the time when you're, an, when you're an addict. People try to take piss out of you when you're vulnerable. But then when you're clean and sober and strong and fit and healthy, they don't want to know. But anyway, uh, yeah, it was triple cat a prison. There was high-profile cases in there. Murderers, concrete chem was in there who killed his wife, chopped her head off and buried it in the back garden. There was a kid called Worm who stabbed someone to death. Um... There was a guy who killed his cellmate and hung him up as though he'd hung himself. And, uh, and I always remember there was one guy. He, I can't remember what he was in for, but he was called Pat. And he was a uh, transsexual. But nobody took the piss out of him. Because, for one, he was funny as hell. And number two, he was about that life. Anybody, he was in for something pretty serious. And anybody who, like, put it on him, he'd just stab him. You know, he was... He was game, and um, but he was funny as well. He used to work on a survey. He'd, he'd come out uh, on the on the landing. And he'd have like bra and knickers on, and <laughs> it 
and he'd be overly, you know, acting overly gay, and it was funny as hell. But people knew not to mess with him because he was about that life. And he used to work on the server, and the Donny lads used to have a bit of a laugh with him. Like, if there was, say, leftovers, say that I'd, we'd had some um, Cornish pasties or something, he'd come out with a tray of leftovers and shout, Oh, does anyone, anyone want any pasties? And someone from Donny Taylor would say, Oh, what's that, pasties? And he'd come running over to the other side of the wing and he'd say, Oh, yeah, pasties, do you want one? We'd be like, No, you're all right. <laughs> Just having a little bit of a laugh. And then, um, yeah, that, that's when I first got locked up. It was like a triple cat A prison. It was a hard, tough prison environment. Um, people just getting slashed, people getting burnt with red hot water, other games of pool. I, I saw a kid get sexually assaulted once in um, in the broom cupboard in Doncatraz. If anyone's ever been there, you'll, you know that little cupboard at the bottom. And the Eddie Mont floor, a kid from Hull, two Donny lads had him, they had his, pulled his pants down and they were sticking a broom up his crease. And he was screaming and see I'd become desensitised to prison at this point and I just, I heard him screaming and I looked in and, and I just laughed at him and said, oh, you know, Muppet, and walked away and you know what I mean, like if that happened on the streets, I'd be phoning the police, like this kid's getting sexually assaulted but in prison, you know, you, you just mind your own business. It's just another day in there. But yeah, Doncatraz was a real tough prison back then. I've seen guys get took hostage. I've seen guys get bullied to death. People that just couldn't hack it anymore. And that's the thing about prison. If you're, tell it if you're like me, if, you, if you're a loser like I was back then, I didn't have anything, you know. I didn't have a job. I didn't have a family. So prison to me... Although it was shit and boring, it wasn't that big a deal. But if you've got a job, you've got a house, you've got kids, responsibilities, wife, family, then prison can, it can break you, you know. I've seen guys lose their mind because they're missing the family and they can't hack it. So they smash the cell up and then they get took off down the block. And um, that's the reality of prison. And all these people that say, no, prison's a holiday camp. I guarantee you, while they're in there, they're complaining and moaning about food, moaning about bang up. But then when they get out, they're like, oh yeah, I've run that wing, I had it boxed off. Now, I tell the truth, prison is shit. I always do well in prison because I was a loser, you know. Um, I was like start selling things on the wing and and you can, you can make good friends in prison. There's a lot of good, um, good creative, talented people in prison. There's a lot of dickheads as well. But, you know, you can make friends in there. What you, I've got friends, what I met in prison, what I'm still friends with to this day. But for the most part, yeah, prison's crap, it's boring. And Doncatraz was a real, very nasty place back in the day. I mean, I was lucky because I was from Donny, so I had all the Donny lads to back me up. But, you know, I've seen kids come from Hull to, that get absolutely battered, just thrown off the wing just because they're from Hull. Um, I've seen people get slashed over a lighter. I remember one kid, we was talking, and I, I can't remember exactly what happened, but someone borrowed a lighter, and they went to get it back, and he says, oh, I ain't got it, and it escalated, and I was just talking to this kid, who was lighter he was, he says, fuck it, I'm going to slash him, and he just walked off, and I'm watching him, he's walked off, got his blade out, and slashed him over a lighter, 50 pence lighter, and I'll never forget that, you know, I've seen things in prison what I'll never forget. But anyway, that's Don Contreras. I don't know what it's like now, but back in the day, it was a real tough, hard, mean, harsh prison environment. Uh, the best thing I can say about it is that I survived it. If you like this video, press the thumbs up. Um, yeah, bonjour.